probably a bit like smoking as well. I think it's going to take a while for people to identify that cannabis, uh, it has taken a while for, for, for researchers to identify the problems with cannabis in the same way that it took researchers years and years to identify the problems with smoking, particularly cancer, because people were saying, no, it doesn't, cigarettes don't cause cancer. Certainly the cigarette companies were saying it didn't cause cancer. We now know that cigarettes do cause cancer and other things. So I think over time we'll, we'll learn what the long-term adverse consequences are, and we're seeing it already with, with cannabis. Um, I think you and I probably met first um, commenting across various media on the terrible spate of, of murder-suicides and mm. familicide yeah. in, in, in Wexford. Um, suicide has continued to be an ongoing problem within our society. Um, and I remember having a conversation with you at one stage in which you, were, you pointed out that where for some people, you know, suicide has become destigmatized, the awful social taboo and kind of religious taboo that accompanied it seems to have been stamped mm. out. But the attitudes towards mental health in Ireland and mental illness are still very much taboo ridden. It's something people feel uncomfortable in talking about. Mm. How, do you think we've broken the back of the suicide problem in Ireland? Are people more aware? Are people more likely to look for help or are we still floundering? People are very aware, aware of the problem of suicide. Um, I think one of the difficulties with suicide is that it, it's often a very impulsive act. I don't buy into the belief that suicide is always due to mental illness. I think there are some people for whom it occurs in the context perhaps of some kind of acute life problem and, and alcohol, you know. Um, I remember a priest friend of mine a few years ago ringing, was chatting to him on the telephone and he, had, he said, oh, I've just come from a very sad funeral. It was a young man um, who's gone out with a girl, this is down the country, was going out with, with a girl and she'd gone on holidays to Spain or whatever and she rang him up from there and said, sorry, my, my relationship with you is off. Um, and it was... Uh, Sunday morning and they lived in the country and they had a gun as many people in the country. He went and got the gun, went down the fields and shot himself. She rang back that afternoon to say, sorry, I shouldn't have said that, it's on again, but he killed himself. So I think a lot of suicides occur um, in that context, in the context of just impulsivity. Young men are impulsive. If you drink alcohol, you get more impulsive. So that's, that's an issue. But in relation to the broader question, Shane, of the stigma of mental illness, I think we are beginning to get to grips with it. And I've been delighted by the fact that the Minister for Health and Children in this country, um, um, John Maloney, has gone public about the fact that he had depression and was on antidepressants. And that was extraordinarily courageous of him. And I think the more people who do that and the more well-known people come forward and talk about their their mental health problems, the better. Um, um, Carol Hunt, a journalist who writes with the Sunday, Sunday Independent, Independent, has done that. Um, I'm trying to think, can you name some other, Shane? You probably remember them as... Well, as me, not, not in uh, no, home, but there has no. been some. There have been there have been a number. There have been a number recently. Um, there have been there was the, there's a cricketer, but then on the other hand, we had the the goalie, the the, the German goalkeeper. Do you remember who took I'm his own life? Afraid sports wouldn't be my um, no. chosen specialised no. subject, no. No, Patricia. But <laughs> nor mine either. <laughs> but no, there there has been there have been well-known people coming forward lately. Talking, talking about this, and I think that's that's all that's all to the good. Mm. Um, There's a way to go yet, though. But I mean, when a senior minister, sorry, when a junior minister, when a person in a senior role in government can say, "Look, I've had depression," yes, that that's that can only be be good and a good example to those. And and I mean, it's a positive message because it shows that even if you have had this very debilitating and potentially life-threatening illness, you can come through it and you can be successful. And that's what people often forget. They still have the myth of, or the image of the old asylum and the, you know, the big chimneys and locked wards and stuff that have mercifully gone mostly around the country. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 the move um, 
sort of, of mental health care, psychiatric care, out of the institution and back into the community. Um, it wasn't exactly a seamless one because there, there was some resistance to mm. it. People were afraid, but it seems to have mm. moved along quite nicely. Well, it has to some extent, except that the, we, we don't still have enough funding for all we would like in the, you know, for treating people. We don't have enough psychologists or therapists at all. Um, we, we're very short on occupational therapists, for example, social workers. I don't have a social worker on my team, even though I work in inner city Dublin and I deal with, you know, problems of violence against women and sexual abuse and all the rest of it, but I have no social worker to turn to. So, you know, the services are still very lacking, but it's better to be working in a general hospital and in outreach clinics than to be in an old institution. There's no mm, doubt about that. Most definitely. Um, the issue that does seem to come up again and again is, is that of uh, child and adolescent psychiatry, mm. that young people of you know, sometimes as young as eight and nine years of age being placed in adult psychiatric yes. wards. Um, and you mentioned the, 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 the lack of psychologists. I mean, I try to do the maths at one stage, and the numbers are not my strong suit either, but if you've got however many classes of psychologists graduating from, from college or university every year looking for work, why is it that the department isn't able to employ them? Why do we have such a shortage? And what's the problem with, with providing sufficient beds in every region for, for children that present with psychiatric and psychological disorders? Well, firstly, to, be, to work as a clinical psychologist, you have to do a clinical training. Mm. So as well as getting your basic degree in psychology, you then have to specialize for another four years. Um, but but, but there are, they are qualifying them. It's funding. Purely funding. It's purely funding. It's purely funding. And, and the reason that we sometimes have to have children and adolescents like the 17-year-old I had to get in through the courts a few weeks ago, a few months ago, is, is because there just aren't enough beds. And if you've got, you know, a, a psychotic 17-year-old threatening to kill his mother because, because of taking cocaine, you know, you have, to get, you have to put them somewhere. You can't keep them in a guard cell. No. You know? Yet they are kept in guard cells sometimes, and aren't they? they? Th th sometimes, they, they, and they shouldn't be. They shouldn't be. Um, and that's that's the problem. There's and the, the the we opened a unit, an adolescent unit, in a sister hospital in Dublin called St Vincent's Fairview. It's, it's a psychiatric hospital, in fact, one of the few remaining. But they've turned some of it into. They've opened adolescent beds. They've opened 14 adolescent beds there, and within a week of opening, it was full. There so, you go. So there mean, we go. There's a demonstration of need, if ever there Absolutely. was one. One of the, the biggest problems facing um, young people and the age at which this presents seems to be getting younger and younger and younger all the time is, is self-harming, mm. whether it's through cutting or burning or ripping out of hair or whatever. Mm. The possibilities are endless. Um, and it seems to be just becoming more and more prevalent all the time. I, mean, I don't think that there's anyone in this room who doesn't know somebody who's presenting with these, mm. these symptoms, these actions.